So here the ARM TechCon, you announced uh, ARM Cortex A35. Yes, we did. So for those that don't know, uh, we launched uh, on Tuesday uh, a product called Cortex A35, which is uh, the first in the line of ultra high efficiency Cortex processors targeted for uh, the, in fact, growing uh, entry level smartphone market, a smart market with, on its own, which we expect to be almost a billion units in 2020. And the Cortex A35 is a full ARM V8A architecture, which means it can run 64 bit code as well as 32 bit code. It has all the enhancements to run uh, cryptographic engines so that effectively do better authentication, uh, give you a much better browsing experience. Importantly, it keeps the power, in fact, uh, even better than the Cortex A7, which is today's leader in uh, efficiency for these types of products. So today, uh, ARM Cortex A7 is the most popular Cortex A? You're absolutely right. And in fact, over the last um, uh, five years, the Cortex A5 and Cortex A7 have shipped over two billion units in smartphones, in wearables, and a lot of other embedded products. And uh, uh, Cortex A7 is very small CPU, right? In terms of uh, size and power and everything? Absolutely. How does uh, this one compare? So just to give you a sense, the Cortex A7, in fact, we used to show this nice graphic, and I can send you that, uh, that showed the size of the Cortex A7 compared to the pencil point. Right? So in 28 nanometer process technology, which is not necessarily the newest, in fact, it's quite an older uh, version, it occupies less than half a square millimeter of die area, so it's really small. And it's usually under 100 milliwatts when it's running full tilt. So it's still a very, very compact, very efficient processor. Now compared to that, the Cortex A35 can actually get at least 10 to 15% better uh, power while delivering up to 40% better performance. Remember, better performance and better power at the same time. And what's interesting is you could see it actually going to lower frequencies of 100 megahertz and, and consuming actually 5 milliwatts or less. So this is really, really a capable processor. We've done a lot more to improve its uh, performance on things like web browsing while improving its efficiency and the capability to uh, change its power characteristics in, in a better way. So it go, ups and, it go up and down in power depending on the, what's needed? Absolutely. Yeah, There's think, more of that? Yes, I think what we've done is give the flexibility of what you want to do with the processor, how you power down, power down regions, uh, and also you can push up, as you say, performance uh, above the Cortex-A7 level uh, and actually bridge that gap between somewhere in the Cortex-A7 to the Cortex-A53, which is the other product that has really uh, proliferated in the marketplace. So how is A53 going to be positioned compared to the A35? Because 35 is is lower power, Yes. but how is the performance compared so to A53? So the Cortex-A53 still has a, a performance bump over the A35, and it is really, really attractive in the efficiency ranges or the mid-range to super mid-range products. You've seen octa-core Cortex A53 parts actually in the mid-range and the super mid-range of the smartphone, and they're in fact ramping in volume. I don't know whether uh, it was clear before, but in 2015 we expect over 50% of the smartphone shipped to be ARM V8A or 64-bit capable, and all, most of those products will have Cortex A53 in them, so you can just get an idea of how popular it is. That's amazing, no? Is that a surprise or not? that it's already so many 64-bit processors shipping this year. It, it is not as much of a surprise, but it is faster than we expected. When we started this year, we said there was going to be a large volume or a large percentage of 64-bit processors, but it's taken off so well, it's certainly uh, faster than we expected. Because uh, none of these phones have four gigabytes of RAM or more, right? So why did they use 64-bit already? That's actually That's a very good other question. Stuff. That's a very good question. I think 64-bit, uh, uh, even though you may not have 4 gigs of RAM, is still useful for some of the other things that the architecture added. Uh, certainly the virtualization capabilities of multiple variants, and you could see uh, some of the applications starting to use 64-bit as a path to uh, when they actually start using larger memory. And many of these uh, ship with LTE. They, they don't even do it 3G anymore, they just do LTE. That is true, and now, in fact, often you see your 
uh, larger screen connected devices sometimes are slower than some of these phones and you have significant data pipes into it, great amount of compute and that all actually gets enhanced when you start using 64-bit processing on the phone itself. And uh, everything that's 32-bit also works, so it's, uh, everything is backward compatible. compatible? The entire legacy of the ARM uh, software ecosystem, which is uh, extremely wide in the smartphone space, actually works just fine on all the Cortex uh, A50 class, A70 class, and A30 class processors. Does that mean next year it's possible that people don't need to do A7 anymore, they're just going to do 35? Uh, that's a fair question. I think in the smartphone world, you will see a transition more and more towards 64-bit. There are some embedded applications which may stay 32-bit, uh, primarily because they will uh, squeeze out every bit of silicon area they can uh, save and every bit of power they can save, and they don't need software stacks that are going all 64-bit. So A7, we believe, and 32-bit will continue for a while, but certainly in the smartphone space, we see uh, a stronger transition to 64 bit. Does the Mali 470 fit with the A35? It does, in fact. Uh, Mali 470 is designed for much more compact uh, uh, form factors uh, for kind of entry level smartphones and, and even wearables. And so it is a very powerful graphics engine, so it gives it the real oomph that it needs to make these devices uh, better user interfaces, uh, better visual capabilities. So since it's 50% for this year already, that means you did all the right decisions when you designed the 64-bit. Everything was the right, uh, there was some choices to be made, right? And it was the right ones. Uh, I think it's a, a tribute to the ARM ecosystem as a whole, right? So we did make choices and, and just as you know, uh, we started this nearly five years ago. The architecture work started uh, in the early part of uh, last, or sec second half of last decade. We announced the architecture in 2012. We announced products in 2013, but and the part that started shipping in 2014. But you can see how quickly they have ramped, and that's a, really a tribute to the ecosystem about how it actually gets all this together really fast. It's ARM and its partnership. So there are some chips for performance, but the very important the volume and everything and ARM is very focused on energy efficiency and this is what you deliver here, right? Yes, and I would say even at the performance level we are focusing on efficiency at that performance level. We want to be the best performant architecture in terms of efficiency at any given point but I think you rightly point out that a huge amount of the volume that has grown in that 64-bit space is in that mid-range, it's in the efficiency level and in, even in the entry phone level and now we're actually augmenting that. So since it's so energy efficient, it will get into all kinds of new markets. So it's going to be great for wearables, but maybe a whole bunch of new things that yes. need very energy efficient. That, that might have been Cortex-M before, but now maybe they want to go to 35 or? That is actually a very interesting point, and we do see all kinds of new applications coming. You could say wearables suddenly started growing, uh, and you can see this is possible for wearables, though it's not its main focus. And in fact, at the higher end, you may look at wearables needing 64-bit capability, also more performance than the A35. In that mid-range wearable range, may or may not need all that 64-bit capability, but you can certainly see things like industrial single board computers and other embedded devices that can use that 64-bit capability while focusing on the efficiency and the cost effectiveness of this product. So there was a big little in the 32-bit, but it really got successful with 64-bit, right? And now it's the 35 is big little compatible. That it's is for correct. that. So you're right. We are now seeing big little everywhere in almost every platform we see, whether it be smartphone uh, or consumer device. And you're also right in that A35 is big little capable, so it can be used with. Uh, an A57 or an A72. It could even be used with an A53 because it is littler compared to the uh, the mid-range product. What do you think about these configurations that have tri-cluster? So this is again a very interesting uh, development or an innovation that we see our partners doing. We provided the architecture of Big Little. It was a concept of the right processor for the right task. And when you look at it, Tri-cluster is another way of showing different performance levels and the extreme dynamic range it provides, but also each of these clusters and each of these performance points will come at its best power efficiency. So it is continuing innovation from the ARM partnership. 
Yeah. Is the development going even faster and faster now? Like uh, you announced, is it coming going to come out sooner than what you did previously? Um, I think that's a fair point. We are accelerating innovation from our standpoint, but it's usually market driven. We build products based on what we see the market demand for. And yes, if you look at some of the announcements we've made over the last few years, you will see that there is more coming out of ARM and, by extension, what's coming out of the ARM partnership. Cool. So everybody buying these entry level and mid range is going to be super happy to get 64 bit. We hope so. Thank you.